Hi, I'm Charlene and I'm a barista and trainer and I've been working with Specialty Coffee for over five years now. In 2014, I won the Belgian Barista Championships and in 2012, the World Iropress Championships. And today I welcome Professor Charles Spence. Charles is an expert in the sensory evaluation of coffee at the University of Oxford. And Charles and I will introduce you to the professional world of coffee, describing taste, aroma and overall flavors in different coffees and how they affect the human brain. So coffee is enjoyed by millions of people around the world for its unique aroma, taste and flavor. Can you tell me a bit more about the sensory experience of coffee? Sensory analysis is kind of the name that's used to describe the science of, of, of the human observers describing the taste, aroma uh, and mouthfeel of, say, coffee. Uh, when you look at the descriptions of, of experts, coffee tasters, um, then you find that they can go into great detail in terms of the tastes and the aromas and the mouthfeels that they get from coffees. And they can use that sensory description, sensory analysis in order to help discriminate between uh, different beans different levels of roasting uh, and different preparation procedures for the coffee. So for example, they can tell the difference between uh, green beans that will lack aroma and a more heavily a roasted bean, where you'll see the development of a, an array of compounds that help to bring out the taste and flavor of the drink. One thing that makes coffee so distinctive is its aroma. Can you explain how we sense this from a cup of coffee? There are two aspects to the aroma of a coffee that, that we can appreciate. On the one hand is the initial orthonasal sniff as we inhale the aroma of a coffee before tasting. Um, but then the second part uh, is the kind of retronasal aroma that we get when we have coffee in our mouths and swallow. It's those two things together that deliver the kind of the rich uh, coffee uh, tasting experience. Uh, depending on the preparation procedure for the coffee, that will lead to the development of different compounds in the coffee. And some number of those will be uh, interact with the saliva in the mouth. Um, and hence that can explain why the orthonasal aroma of coffee can sometimes be different from uh, the retronasal uh, experience. There are about, we think, about 40 uh, different uh, compounds uh, that contribute uh, to the aroma uh, of coffee. And some number of those will be available to us when we, when we sniff a coffee like the one we have here. So in this case, we may be getting a bit of uh, a nutty aroma, uh, a little chocolate perhaps and those aromas just delivered orthonasally. Research suggests that depending on the level of roast, that will change the aroma experience we get, and that with a lighter roast, we're going to experience orthonasally more of the fruity and herbal notes. And then as the roasting becomes heavier or darker roast, then what we'll see is an emergence instead of smoky, of bitter notes, and also at the same time a reduction in the acidity of the taste of the coffee. So next we taste coffee. Can you explain to me the process of tasting coffee? Okay, uh, so when we taste coffee, we get both the initial uh, orthonasal uh, hit as we sniff, and then as we actually taste, uh, we get taste on the tongue, uh, and as we swallow, we'll get the retronasal aromas coming off that will all combine to give us what, what we call taste, but is really flavour. So on the, on, on the tongue, what we'll be getting is a, a little sweetness, sourness, bitterness, perhaps in some cases also salt uh, and umami, the five basic tastes. Uh, but much of the interest in, in coffee is the retronasal aromas that we get. And that's going to be deliver uh, the floral, the fruity, uh, the caramel, the chocolate, the smoky notes are all coming from those. Our brain binds the tastes and the aromas together into flavours. And also combines kind of the mouthfeel. So that you might think about whether a coffee tastes uh, juicy or astringent in the mouth. Uh, and what kind of uh, aftertaste lingers in the mouth after you have swallowed and all of those are really part of the, of the tasting uh, experience. And beyond that, when we come to smell or taste coffee, that's likely to trigger memories, perhaps moods uh, and emotions related to previous experiences of tasting, of smelling the coffee. So you might find that the aroma of coffee can impact our mood, perhaps make us more alert or more relaxed and induce a certain mood. The full sensory experience spans a period from preparation all through consumption. What might affect how I experience a cup of coffee? I think pretty much everything can affect your experience of a cup of coffee. That's going to start from the moment that the coffee is prepared, uh, the sounds of grinding of the machine at work, 
are preparing your cup of coffee will set expectations in your mind about the aromas and the flavours and taste that you might have coming. Thereafter, when somebody presents you with a cup of coffee, uh, you'll see its colour, again, setting expectations about aroma and taste. Where the milk has been added, if there's a crema or a foam, again, changing what we expect to taste. And in particular, when milk or, or sugar is added to a coffee, both of those tend to reduce the amount of aroma we get from a coffee. But for those who want to add milk to their coffee, then probably there are things that one can do. So uh, lower fat homogenized milk tends to have smaller uh, globules of fat, uh, and hence those uh, result in, a, in, a, in a, a greater aroma from the coffee than a full fat milk. Are there other factors that might influence the sensory profile of a coffee? Uh, I think that there are. Clearly central are the beans that are used, the level of roasting, even the geographical origins, and the way that coffee has been prepared all will have a, a profound effect on the sensory profile uh, of the coffee that one drinks. But beyond the coffee itself, there are a number of other factors that can also affect the experience. And in some recent research that we have done, uh, we've been looking at serving exactly the same coffee from a white porcelain mug, from a blue mug, or from a clear glass mug. And what we found was that exactly the same coffee tasted different as a function of the mug uh, it was served from. In particular, the white mug seeming to have people rating the intensity of the coffee as higher, uh, but reducing uh, the perceived level of sweetness. Uh, beyond the mug that we drink from, also what's on top of the coffee can have an impact. Everything from kind of those who shake different kind of chocolate shapes onto the top of their milk, through to kind of the exploding world of latte art. And if one sees a beautiful bit of art in kind of the foam on top of one's coffee, that can set expectations about the skill uh, and workmanship of the person who's prepared that coffee and hence change our experience on drinking. But ultimately, I think the key point is just to realise how multisensory the experience of drinking coffee is. And if you take away any one of the senses, say, for example, just holding your nose so you cannot smell the aroma of the coffee, kind of the experience is ruined. And those great coffee tasting experiences are going to engage all of our senses together. Is there any research that might suggest that the aroma has an effect on the body? Well, it's commonly suggested or thought that the aroma of coffee by itself uh, is sufficient to alert people to wake them up in the morning. That said, the carefully controlled scientific studies haven't provided much support for that claim as yet. But nevertheless, clearly the aroma of coffee is one of the most universally liked smells out there. Uh, very meaningful, and whenever we smell the aroma of coffee, that's going to trigger memories and emotions of, of previous coffee drinking experiences. And by so doing, it may well affect our mood and potentially also our well-being. Thank you, Charles. That was really interesting. If you'd like to know more, please visit us at coffeeandhealth.org or follow us on Twitter at coffeeandhealth.org.